In this video, the analog joysticks get upgraded to BLE using ESP32. The original project was based on the ESP8266 and I was surfing a game through a web server. The thing was that I just couldn't get myself to make the game more interesting and playable. Some of the comments along the way talked about maybe using it as a USB or a BLE interface to a computer. So, in order to get this project going on and I really want to solve everything and make a box for it, I've changed into ESP32 and I've taken the BLE route. So the joystick is acting as a gamepad and as you can see I'm controlling a really nice flight simulator I found online. So it's actually through a web browser, I'll put a link for it. So let me uh, show you what I've done to get it to this point. So I made some major changes in the system. I've moved into ESP32 and the reason for that is I want to use the BLE of it and present this as a gamepad. I've already done this part, it's after that, it's before I'm getting everything soldered on this board. I've tried using the analog for the analog here, it works really bad, I didn't get any consistent reading and I've read it's an issue with it. So I took an, the old MCP3008 which I've used in the past, I'm going to put a link for this and I've changed the uh, the voltage divider, I keep on missing that word, voltage divider, I've changed them because I've now dropped it to work on the 3.3 instead of the 5 it was working on before, so I could remove the logic level converter here, last part, and I can later on use it from the battery. So now I have to solder everything, I got a smaller MCP here, and I got a socket instead of this and I'm probably going to make a box for it as well, so stick around. So I've completed the board. We got the ESP32, MCP3008, the four cables and the 3.3 volt that goes to the controlling the buttons and the three analogs with the voltage dividers and cap. Now I added two more things. One is a touch pad going to connect the touchpad so I can turn it on and off basically putting it into sleep and the second thing is an LED that gets is blinking when it's not connected it's going to be fully lit when it's connected and then when you hold this for a long time it's going to blink really fast and turn itself off let me demonstrate so now I'm going to touch you can see it's switched on it's blinking and it's already connected to my computer now a long press, fast blinks, and it turns itself off. So my next step is to take this and create and replace this one with the loom. That's why I made connectors. And of course make a box print a 3D 3D printed box. For this enclosure, I think it's gonna look like this. This will go that hand. We'll have an LED and the button on this side. I need to figure out what to do with the uh, with the touch pad. Well, let's go to work. So, I got everything ready. We've got the socket with its loom, the ESP32, MCP3008, the connectors for this, LED, and I'm gonna put something for this to be the touch pad, probably um, some uh, electric tape or something. I wanna get a piece of metal, but I haven't been able to get one. And again, I'm in house quarantine. Uh, two screws to put this in place and of course the cool box. So let's assemble everything. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put this into place. This wire goes through this little hole here, which I should have made a little bit bigger. And the second thing is the LED goes into here like this. And I just fired up my hot glue gun to put a little bit of hot glue to keep it in place. Next step, screwing this into place, like this here, this goes, okay, already something that is a fail in my design, which is this too close to each other, but it will work.
one. Hmm. A bit tricky, as you can see. place. Next, the connector goes into place. I haven't sourced out um, screws and nuts for it yet because as I mentioned before I'm in house quarantine again. So this goes into here, get pushed in and we got two, yeah it doesn't stay in unfortunately. We'll need screws here for sure. Maybe scraping a little bit just to make it easier to go in. Okay, <laughs> doesn't stay. Maybe we'll put some hot glue just for now. But and I got connectors. I made them in the same color, so it'll be easy to make sure which goes where. This one goes this way, and this one goes yes, like this. And I left space here in the box here for a battery, and this goes into here as i mentioned i need to get two screws with nuts here one that has a female connect on this side so the joystick can be connected to this and uh, i need to 3d print the cover i didn't want to do that yet before i put everything inside make sure everything is okay so now let's go plug it to the computer before connecting to the computer i've connected it to a usb here i had to make a big hole and allow the cable to go through due to limitation of what i could solder by hand the the joystick is connected here and now if I'll touch this you can see it's switched on and now it's blinking it it means it wait to be connected or paired to the computer so now let's turn on the BLE on my computer as you can see when I turn on the BLE on my computer this LED will go from blinking to solid that means it's connected the joystick is fast the buttons and this one as well. As I finally got out of house quarantine, offer set me up with a battery, I had to change the connector, but it's good and as you can see it fits in and I even printed out a cover, so now it's a box. Added some electric tape here and if we'll touch it will turn on blink once probably and then just connect to my computer. There you go, went solid, working on a battery. And of course it can be charged through the ESP32 here. It's got a tar charging mechanism on it. So now let's go over the code and go and play some flight simulator. I use two libraries for this code. The BLE gamepad, which is this library, and it's got great example. And the second one is the Adafruit MCP3008 which also got examples in it and it works very well with the MCP3008 on the ESP32. The way I achieve on and off in the system is by putting the system into deep sleep. It happens in the setup. I'm doing the touch a touch interrupt for a T3 so allowing you to use a touchpad and I enable this, the, the ESP uh, touchpad wake up, meaning I'm enabling the ESP to wake up on a touch from a touchpad. Look, that was a complicated one. <laughs> now I check if the sleep wake up reason is not the ESP sleep wake up on touchpad, I'm letting it go into deep sleep. If not, I'm just setting up the rest the rest of the system, just setting up the LEDs, starting the ADC for the MCP3008, setting up the input for the buttons for the joystick and start the BLE game. Touchpad interrupt gets a callback to this function and I use as a touch counter to know how many times in continuance the, the touchpad was touched. Now if it's over 50 milliseconds from the last time I'm it's not if it's less than 50 milliseconds from the last time I'm adding another count. If not I'm just making it to zero and starting all over again. And I use it here to say if the touch 
counter is bigger than 30, then I'm going to sleep and you see the blink that I showed, it's a long blink, and then it goes into deep sleep. I have three analog channels, the X, Y of the joystick and the throttle. And I'm sampling them here, which I'm basically just reading it from the MCP3008. I do some calculation on them getting the middle between the minimum and the maximum. It's something that I've measured over and over again. I've mentioned all of this in the previous uh, videos. And if it's about point, let's say 5% of the center to each direction, I'm recalculating this to put it between 127 and minus 127, which are the values that the gamepad is passing. If not, I'm just putting it into zero, which is center. Uh, it's a bit different. The formula always calculated uh, through mapping. And if, the, if any of the axes has changed, I'm putting the new state, and I'm setting it to its changes that will be used to send it information. I'll show you in a second. I'm testing the buttons. Again, I've went over this in the previous chapters. Now, if the BLE game is connected, I'm making sure the digital pin is on. And if, if change was set true, or the last time I've sent HDI updated, that's important because if last you if not updating through a few times, for me it's every 50 milliseconds, you just lose connection. Uh, I'm putting a head state as <coughs> centered, and then I'm using the button state because all the buttons, including the head, on my joystick are buttons actually. So I'm changing it a little bit, I'm choosing which one the buttons to change. If I have to put the head state in a certain way, and then I'm just sending all of this to the joystick and I'm updating the last time. If I'm not connecting, this is the blink you're seeing when it's not connected. That's about it. That's about this, uh, all the code in the game. We're just setting the button and getting sample. And that's about it. So let's go and play some flight simulator. Control test before taking off. All working well. The left button is the power up. The center button is power down. And the far right button is the brakes. And we got a landing. If you haven't done it by now, please subscribe, leave a message, give a thumbs up, and see you next time.